Welcome back. New polling shows that President Joe Biden has taken the lead over Donald Trump in a hypothetical general election matchup in the key state of Pennsylvania. In the latest Quinnipiac University poll, Biden leads Trump by three points, 49 percent to 46 percent among registered voters in that state. Though, let's be clear, that is within the survey's margin of error. It does mark the first time a Quinnipiac poll has shown Biden ahead in Pennsylvania this election cycle. So there's some noteworthiness to that. Back in October, the same survey showed Trump leading Biden 47 to 45. When third party candidates are offered as ballot options as well, the race gets even tighter, with the new poll showing Biden's lead narrowing to just two points. Joining us now, Bloomberg politics editor Laura Davis and Laura, let's start briefly with that poll. We're a long way to November, of course, <clears throat> but Pennsylvania might be the most important state on the map. It's certainly the one Biden has spent the most time in. Senior aides acknowledged to me they don't really have a path to victory if they don't win it. So give us your impressions of, of that poll and, and what it says about the race to 270. Yeah, this is a good sign for Joe Biden. There's been a series of these polls looking specifically at swing states, and Trump uh, has been beating Biden uh, poll after poll over the past several months. So if this is uh, becomes a trend, this is a good sign for him. You know, Pennsylvania is personally important to the president. He's from Scranton. Uh, and so you've seen that play out in his campaign last week, giving a big democracy-focused speech there. So this is going to be an area where he's very focused. The thing that his campaign aides are surely very worried about is when you look at all those third-party candidates in there. You have RFK Jr. picking up 11 percent support. That's not good. There's also um, signs that no labels is looking at fielding a candidate. Uh, Joe Manchin has been someone on their short list. He is both well known and popular in Pennsylvania. So this be could become an issue for him uh, if there are more entrants into the race. Uh, and, and Trump as well. Uh, it really blows open the whole race in some of these areas. Uh, if you have uh, well known third party candidates who are picking up, uh, you know, double digit support. And just as a sign of Biden's commitment to Pennsylvania, he was just there last week at Valley Forge. He's going again Friday at Allentown. He's going again next week. He will be living in the Keystone State. They know how important that is. Uh, Laura, let's talk about Chris Christie. He dropped out of the race yesterday. He had suggested, he had pledged he was going to make it all the way to New Hampshire. That turned out not to be the case. No impact in Iowa. He wasn't playing there. But it could have won in New Hampshire. Give us your sense as to how it could play out. Yeah, so um, if you're Chris Christie, uh, you know, before giving his speech yesterday, a lot of people assumed he was going to uh, endorse Nikki Haley. The timing of his departure uh, would seem to help her. Um, you know, he, he's not really polling very high in Iowa, as you mentioned, but in New Hampshire, he's picking up significant support. Haley supporters and Christie supporters, there's a certain amount of overlap there, so she would be naturally poised to pick up uh, that support. Of course, after that hot mic moment, um, it was clear, uh, you know, what, what Christie uh, was really thinking in his head. Uh, but this, you know, it, it is interesting. Um, for Haley because it, it does help her um, ultimately. Uh, you know, she is still trailing Trump, uh, you know, significantly, but Haley, uh, but New Hampshire is her strongest state and uh, her, uh, uh, Donald Trump's weakest point on this early portion of the map. So if she's able to at least beat expectations in Iowa, not necessarily win, that could set her up in New Hampshire. But if she's there, particularly with Christie out, she has to deliver if she wants to continue that momentum in her campaign. And Laura, let's end by talking about Iowa. Just now, a few days away, uh, we're going to talk to Governor DeSantis later on Morning Joe. What are you hearing? What kind of number does he need to put up? What kind of showing does he need to have to be able to even just get through Iowa, a state where he's bet everything, to even make it to New Hampshire and beyond? He needs to come in uh, second, and he needs to come in second well above uh, Nikki Haley. So this is going to be very difficult for him. The polling has not been in his favor, uh, though his campaign says his ground game is strong, and they think they will overperform the polls. All right. Bloomberg politics editor Laura Davidson, thank you as always. I'm certain we'll be speaking to you again soon. And thanks to all of you for getting up way too early with us on this very busy Thursday morning. A jam-packed Morning Joe starts right now.